shower down tonight. We need you, Lord. Bless those, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, that are prepared to hear your word. Let them accept it, God. We thank you now. In Jesus' name. Somebody who loved God, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You can be seated. Before we get started, I think oftentimes before the word of God comes forth that it is important that there is, there is a set atmosphere and you've got to do that yourself. Uh, you, you ought to just share with somebody standing beside you, sitting down beside you. Tell them, say, tonight I'm not going to take any mess off the devil. I'm going to praise God anyhow. In spite of what's going on, I'm going to magnify him anyhow. Though you slay me, yet will I trust you. I want to talk to you tonight on the subject of surviving your setbacks. Surviving your setbacks. It, it is. It is. It is. Come to to my attention as a man who walked around on this earth for about fifty seven years. I have seen a lot of things. There's something, oftentimes, that that happens with us. It is as if God schedules certain times in our lives and he will take us it appears as if he is setting us back but literally he's just setting us up he is doing something within us somehow or another that that only he can do he is God He's wonderful, he is awesome, he is amazing, but he's God. And God has the right to do what he wants to do. He is a sovereign God. And like myself, I'm quite sure that since you've been living, you've had some setbacks. You've had some times when you came to church and everybody else was praising him and you couldn't hardly find a praise everybody else was glorifying his name but when you showed up it appeared as if it was difficult for you to get out what's on the inside but tonight I want to share with you that whatever you are dealing with I've already prayed about it and I've asked God to move you from one place to the next you are getting ready to be advanced and God is getting ready to do something aggressively in your life. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. The first thing that you've got to do somehow or another is to assess the setback. You, you've got to begin to look at it and try to understand what, what, what God is doing. Many times you've got to determine the source because we have a tendency to blame a whole lot of stuff on the devil. We try to suggest, well, it was the devil or the devil did it, but God is still in control. He knows exactly what he's doing. He knows how to do it and when to do it and where to do it. He knows why he's doing it. So sometimes you've got to step back and, and, and determine where it's coming from. Many times we like to blame the devil, but, but I want you to share, I want to share something with you tonight. You cannot blame the devil what, for what God allows. God, God allows some things to happen to us. He, he fixes it so we go through some hell sometimes. He fixes it where we go through some, some high water every once in a while. He, he wants us to be able to know what it's like to praise him in our painful situation. Many of us, we, 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 we come to church and we, we join the church and we come out the world and we think that that's it and no more problems and no more trials. But God got some stuff that will get the praise up out of you and cause you to do some stuff. And 
and to magnify him in the middle of a whole lot of circumstances and situations and pain. God knows how to get it out of you. We come here oftentimes, and when we come to the church of the Lord, many times we come with a shout and, and with a dance, and that's the way we're supposed to come. But the devil tries to stop that because there is power in your praise, power in your dance, and power in your shout, and power in your glory, and power in your hallelujah, and power in your stomping, power when your hands are lifted, and power, you got power in your praise. The devil's job is to try to stop you from assessing that power. Sends you through some situations and causes you to try to rethink your relationship with God. And, and that's why it's important, beloved, that you have a, a, a experience with God. Because relationships oftentimes can be broken up. But once you've had an experience with him, I'm not talking about joining the church. I'm not talking about finishing new members class. I'm talking about having a real experience with God. Where when, when the devil tries to lift up his ugly head against you, you can tell him, I know him for myself. I know God. I know he's able to pull me up out of this situation. I know he's able to work things out for me. I know he's, he's able to fix it for me. Anybody here know that God is able to fix it for you? We go through some situations and many times the devil, when we begin to uh, look at what's going on, in, instead of trying to uh, assess the setback, many times the devil tries to convince us to assume the worst. As if God is not going to work it out. That's why you got to have a, an experience with God. Because when you have an experience with him, you know how to run over to your Bible and Pull out your word and understand that all things work together. That's what's important about it because the devil always try to give you the worst case scenario. And you walk around throughout the day with your head hung down. Not feeling like doing anything. In other words, the devil tries to steal your joy. The devil don't want you to be able to give God praise all day long. So he asks God whether or not he can try you. Whether or not he can move into your neighborhood and mess with your mind and mess with your finances and mess with your family. But you've got to learn how to tell the devil, get thee his behind me. I'm not going to let you do this to me. I'm not let, going to let you mess up my joy and mess up my journey and mess up my life and mess up my family and mess up my finances and mess up my future. Devil, you are a liar. Sometimes you just got to lose it. And then once in a while, it, it sneaks out because oftentimes we got a whole lot of closet praises. I came here tonight to, to, to yank you out the closet. I know you don't want nobody to know that you got the Holy Ghost, but I came here tonight to yank you out the closet and expose to the world that you are a praiser. And that you don't mind giving God's name the glory in spite of what goes on. Tell your neighbor, yes, I am a praiser. I dare you to tell somebody, and it don't take much for me to give God's name the praise. I praise him at the drop of a hat. I praise him in the safe way. I praise him in the CVS. I praise him at the Giants. I praise him in Neiman's. I praise him at Nordstrom's. I praise him in Macy's. I am. Tell somebody, so you don't know what God's done for me. I'll go ahead and tell you, don't get me started. He's been good to me. And every time I think about how good he's...